way more useful data for us because not only we get like your driving data and your driving video, but we also get uh, by default like all the hand traffic from, the, from, uh, from, from your car. We also get all the sensor from the device itself or for us. Those are way more useful uh, type of data that we can use uh, to, to train a more sophisticated function that we cannot with uh, just the app. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, the idea is that, like, uh, as you can see, the trend is, is very strong for, uh, from open pilot users, luckily. And so the amount of, like, good high-definition data that we, that we are interested in is actually, like, growing very quickly. And we, we expect to become, uh, to make pretty much, like, insignificant the amount of data that we actually get from purely from, from, the, uh, from the, the, the app. And so, yeah, I mean, like, it's, uh, it's a compromise, like, uh, how, how scalable you want the system to be. Like, we, we, as you said, we plan to achieve 100 million miles uh, in, uh, in, uh, within, like, uh, a year or something more than, uh, something more than a year. And so the, 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 the trade-off is between uh, how, how defined, uh, how, like, how much data you want to collect, how sophisticated you want to be your data collection versus scalability. And I f we believe that we found kind of like the best sweet spot uh, with, with open pilot people driving with, uh, with our dash cam, with, Eon, uh, with the Eon device, uh, because uh, we kind of collect all the data that we need uh, and we believe it's like scalable and maintainable. So a a every company that works on the space has their own definition, like their own definition of the type of data that they need. We have ours and uh, uh, we believe it's, uh, it's a good compromise between quantity and quality. Yes? Sorry, I came in late, so skip this if you've already answered it. But um, it strikes me that uh, things like Tesla, these other vehicles, they have so many other sensors. They can be so much more aware of the surrounding context. Yes. So are you able to read those from the CAN bus, or do you just blow it off and go straight vision from the camera? How do you, how do you address that? Because Yeah. Well, so um, in order to make a system that is a lot better than what, what ships today with the car, uh, step one is like let's use as much as possible what you see in front of you. Right? You can have a system that is like a lot better than what is today using just what you see in front of you. Right? And that, that's a good starting point, which is what we provide. However, we can also read everything that comes from your car. So if your car is a key, for example, with side radars, well, we can read some information from the side radars too, so integrate with it. Something that we plan to do currently, we don't, we don't yet. But we do have access to the, to the radar data, so most of the cars that ship today that are compatible with uh, uh, they, they are equipped with adaptive cruise control and so they already come with, with a radar and we have the use right now like data coming from, from the radar to provide like better, better features. So we do use as much as possible what comes with the car and then of course like at a certain point we do, we do believe that like, to, to expand the system and to make the system like uh, more, more valuable yeah you would need like more, more view around the car. But right now, it's, the limitation is not really how much you see, it's more like how well you use what you can see. The yes. follow on would be, um, as you get more and more integrated with the built-in systems of the car, um, I mean, I've heard that their um, uh, OEMs are taking measures to improve the, the partitioning and security to block exactly what open pilots trying to do. So how do you actually do the, how do you actually arrange these well, interfaces? Yeah, that you need? I mean, open pilot for us right now is, uh, it's, a, it's a development project. Uh, and uh, the way to, to make OpenPilot scalable, to have to engage with a lot of like developers around the world, is to make OpenPilot what it is today, which is like a tool or a software that can work with car that people can buy today. The, the end goal for Karma is actually to engage with uh, OEM of T1 supplier and work together to ship OpenPilot in, in their product, in their cars, or in their like driver assistance system. So it's uh, this is a start for us. It's not the end goal. What we have today is not the end goal. The end goal is. Uh, well, how do, how, do we, how do we scale? And the only way to scale is engaging with uh, uh, OEM uh, that actually wants to, wants to ship a pilot uh, in, in their cars. Do you, do you think that you're gonna continue with the, the windshield mounted device or is it gonna plan on trying to use the cameras that are already in the vehicle? No, you can't really use the cameras that are already in the vehicle because they're like kind of wired directly with, with the chip that does imaging processing. So it's very hard to read the images off of the camera that is in the uh, we, we right now we we are okay like with using like camera provided by our systems. Uh, the camera itself is like cheap; it's not like an expensive part, uh, and uh, I, I don't think it would be feasible uh, otherwise. Yes. I have a question about the data that you collected. Yeah. Um, some of which came from me. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Do, do I? You're welcome. Do 
do I have the rights to get that data downloaded Absolutely. somehow? Yes. And how is it protected from other people? Like if you have an inward facing camera, I don't want people to yeah. see not me. Yeah, I mean, good question. Um, so you, you have absolutely access to download your data. Uh, this is like something that we, we consider even useful for developers. Like if you are driving and you want to do some test, you want to collect data, well, you should have access to your data. You should be able to download your data. We, like two, year, two, two, two three weeks ago, we released all our, most of, some of the important development tools that we use to, to, to develop open pilots so that people can actually develop in the, same, in the same way that we do. And so you can drive, collect data, download the data that you drive, that you, that you actually collect it and develop with it. Uh, regarding the, face, the driver facing camera, by default, there is a toggle in settings. By default, uh, the toggle is off. So we don't record uh, your, your data. We still provide you the monitoring functionalities, but we don't record your data. If you want to contribute and give us more like data diversity, which we actually need to develop like a better system, well, you can turn it on and then we have access to your data. Uh, but it's up to you. Do other developers, the you know, open source developers in the community also have access to that data if I choose to share it with Tama or is there No, absolutely not. No, no. You, you can decide to share the link to your data, which is like a, a generated link, not something obvious, to, with, other, with other people, but like, of course not. Like other people don't have access to your data and we will not share like your data with, with other users. I think the only thing that we know about the user is like their, their Google, the, the Google uh, login uh, system. So we, do, we, do, we don't know like any like personal information except like the driving data itself and, uh, and the Google login. There's two maybe parts of my question. One is the privacy question, but the other is that from a development point of view, it's for especially for machine learning applications, you, you want to have lots of data for training. So is there any way to get some of what Tama AI has collected as an individual? Well, if it we involves just release uh, yeah. 33 hours of data that you can download from our website. So that, I think that answers your question, right? So we have like three of, of our data that we collected driving, and that's like open and downloadable, and we provided tools to develop with that if that's of interest. I mean, we typically like open source data that some of the data that we collect, if we believe it's useful to developers. And uh, of course you have access to your data. So both your data and this data set that we believe could be useful for people to develop on, which comes from our, our personal like, data set as, as common engineers. Okay, one more question. Yeah. Um, the, the Panda device that I uh, got for my car, it was like almost two years ago now. Okay. Is it like obsolete now? Should I get a new one? No, it's not obsolete. So we're still using it, yes. We are still selling it, we're still using it. It's the main device that we use for interfacing uh, the car, getting data from the car, eventually like sending data for the pilot. Uh, so it's still like uh, device. Now we don't we don't plan to shift away from it. Uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty. I mean, like the chip that is using is not like at, at the limit of what what at, at, at the capability given the usage that we do. So absolutely not. Uh, it's, uh, we still plan to, to stick with it. We like the Panda code is called like Panda. It's like the code is also open source. Uh, people already contributed to it, uh, and so the project by itself. Uh, uh, yeah, we don't want to bring it to, to an end at all, like anytime soon. So, still relevant. Yeah. Any more questions? Cool. cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, we have a merch table if you're interested in buying either a self driving car tour t shirt or any of the devices that Ricardo mentioned. Um, we'll be around, Eddie, Harold, myself, Ricardo, if you guys want to chat with us, ask other questions. Yeah, could you? Yeah. Uh, Tell us briefly what the price tags are.